I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I got up to the 230 pounds, and when I lost some of the weight, I couldn't see it coming off. Um, then I lost a total of 50 pounds altogether, and I still look in the mirror, and I still see the same fat person. Did you find us okay? Yeah, it was yeah. pretty easy. How was your flight? Oh, really good, really good. No problems? Yeah. No, no. What are you interested in uh, talking to me about today? Um, well, I have extra tissue in the chest area, and it's kind of a bit of a concern. <laughs> so it's the breast area? Yes. Okay. Why does it bother you so much? Um, probably just because it's, um, it's a lot different from what everybody else looks like. I can't wear um, tighter clothes. Um, I won't go swimming without a t-shirt. Just different things like that. I'm kind of limited in the things I'll let myself do and wear. Just turn a quarter turn. Gynecomastia is defined as benign enlargement of the male breast. In the majority of young males, it will go away on its own. And then you're left over with about 5 to 10 percent of males that it doesn't completely resolve, as in Jay's case. I probably started gaining weight when I was probably around 8, that kind of age. Probably around that age, I started to notice that um, my body was not exactly the same as everybody else's that was at the pool. And that's when I kind of first became self-conscious about it because you'd have to get changed and then everybody would be swimming and they would kind of look at you and, and make comments and things like that. One time, my youngest brother hit me in the chest and I said to my mother, Luke hit me in the boob. <laughs> and my mom said, guys don't have boobs. And my youngest brother said, but Jay does. And that really stuck in my head. And that has never left. My family doctor said, well, if he loses the weight, it'll go away on its own. But I've done research and found that it doesn't go away with weight, the weight loss. And I did actually go up to 230 pounds and lost 50 pounds. And there was very little change in the you know, the breast area. <laughs> Between the age of about 13 to 16, we see some studies showing up to two thirds of these young males can have some degree of gynecomastia. And then there's a second spike in the incidence in older men once they get beyond the age of 60. There's two types of causes. One is physiological, which is what Jay has. And then there is the pathological variety, where you can actually develop gynecomastia because of certain diseases, like uh, liver disease or breast cancer. Much more common is the physiological. And that's basically thought to be an imbalance between estrogen, which is a female hormone, and androgens, which is a male hormone. Hi Sean, it's Jay. I just got in. Um, finally here. So excited to be in Toronto. I'm um, just wondering what you're up to and uh, if you're working today and um, when I can get together with you. Seeing as how I have a brother here, it's kind of nice to have family around when you're going through something like this. So I f Toronto was my first choice. Jason was a bit different growing up. Um, he was a little overweight. How you doing? Cool. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Cool. Come on. All right. He was also uh, a little feminine compared to other boys that I knew growing up. Um, he collected things that other boys didn't collect. Um, strawberry shortcakes, My Little Ponies, Couch Fetch Kids, that kind of stuff. I remember 
definitely remember him getting picked on a lot for being overweight. But I don't ever remember them singling out his, his boobs. So you didn't notice anything um, about no, not different until you about really me. Pointed it out. Really? really, once you pointed it out, I was trying to check it out. And, yeah, and you know, I can. Really it's kind it. of one of those things. It's like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, did I start gaining weight because of an issue, or did I get an issue because I gained weight? It was kind of a way to hide from people. Growing up gay in a small town such as Hatfield Point, where everybody knows everybody and everybody's business, um, it was a way for me to not have to go out on a date. It was a way for me to not have to play sports and not have to do things with the rest of <laughs> my classmates. Just by talking about it has been a, an important step, I think. And Is it like coming out again? Kind of, in a way. It is, sort of. It's one of those things, it's like a sensitive subject that you don't want to talk about, and um, it's different, but it's similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. You grow up in a small community and you're bombarded with being gay is obscene and crazy and, and you don't go there type of thing, but he introduced me to a lot of people and they were all normal and, uh, I mean, it's just part of life. And it's not a choice. All right, I'm ready. Let's okay. take a walk around, show you what I do. Good. Wardrobe's over there, okay. makeup's over there, and cool. back there are all of the uh, uh, sets. Right. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see them later. I, I always after a while. knew or felt I knew that he was gay. I wasn't sure if he knew about me and it's just one of those great coming out experiences. It's this huge burden that lifts from you with being honest and being open with someone, especially someone that you care about so much. I really like the person that I have turned out to be. No matter what anybody says, I really, I like my personality. I like my sense of humor <laughs> and I like a lot of things, but the physical side has been the part that I don't enjoy. The way it feels to remove the layers uh, it, one by one, it, it's an amazing feeling. It's like weights being lifted off of my shoulders, just p bit by bit. Um, it started with the gay thing when I started, when I came out. Um, I, I just felt like a whole new person, and I, this is just going to complete the puzzle, I think. I mean, I'm just going to be a whole person, finally. I think the reason why being gay and having gynecomastia is a problem is because you're comparing yourself to another man. I definitely like to be dating somebody. I don't think I'm ready. You can't love somebody else until you love yourself. And so I want to love all of me and not just the inner me. I want to love the outer me too. So we'll wait and see what happens. I've known Jay for five years. We went to travel school together in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. We're both travel agents. He's a great guy. Um, he's the first gay friend that I've ever had, and uh, it just makes us closer, I think. I still don't think he, he needs it, but I know it's going to make him feel better about himself, and that's the most important thing. I don't know how gynecomastia is perceived in gay culture. I don't have it, I guess. So I, I don't know how people perceive Jay. Um, I know he's dealt with some rejection, but you know, so have I. So like everyone does. So I don't know if it's from that or, or not. I joined a support a group online that um, you give them your email address and different people that have the same condition um, right to this like mailing list and everybody in the mailing list gets the information and you can communicate with other people from around the world um, with this com with this condition and it's really helpful I mean I learned a lot the next step was I went to my family doctor and it was really hard to actually say it out loud for the first time and she just said well what seems to be the problem type of thing and I just said well 
I have boobs. <laughs> and that's how I brought it up. And we went from there. And she was really, really supportive. Jay told me about the surgery, I think it was about a year and a half ago. He had been doing some research on the internet and found out that there was, you know, a name for this and there was something he could do about it. He didn't have to live with it if he didn't want to. If the means are there, if you have an opportunity to fix something about yourself, I think you should go for it. People start at different places on kind of a path to discovery or self fulfillment. Some people start with the physical, some people start with mental or spiritual. Um, and there's, you know, all different roads. They all kind of lead to the same place though. I'm definitely excited yet scared at the same time that I'm excited that something's going to finally happen, but I'm scared that it's not going to be what I want. Okay, Jason, you have to put you to sleep, all right? You think some good things? Pleasant dreams will seem just a little while, all right? Mm -hmm.